So in example 5, we're going to solve the initial value problem, negative 4, 1, negative 4, 0, and x of 0 is equal to 3, 8. So let's see how that affects things. Um, let me remind you what our solution was to the previous problem, because this is the same matrix that we had, actually it was in example 3. In example 3, we solved this in general, and we found the general solution. So, if you're kind of just tuning in for example 5, go back and look at example 3, and you'll see that we found the general solution. X general was uh, C1 times uh, e to the negative 2t times 1, 2 plus C2 times the quantity t e to the negative 2t times 1, 2 plus uh, e to the negative 2t times 0, 1. So that was, uh, we, we did some work in example 3 to get to that point, so I'm not going to repeat that now. But uh, if you don't remember that, just go back and check in example 3. You'll see, it's all worked out. Um, now, let's see how this uh, works with our initial condition, because this is the new part of this problem. x is 0 is equal to 3, 8. So that means I'm going to plug in t equals 0 here. So I'll get c1. e to the 0 is just that. 1, 2, plus c2 times, now, 0, e to the 0, times 1, 2, plus e to the 0, times 0, 1. And so a lot of these uh, terms drop out. The e to the zeros are all going to be 1, so I get c1 times 1, 2, plus c2. Now, this, this term completely drops out because it's multiplied by 0, and then I just have a c2 times 0, 1 because e to the 0 is still 1, and that's supposed to be equal to 3, 8. So I can expand this out into two equations if I distribute the c's into the vectors. Looks like I've got c1 plus uh, 0, c2 is equal to 3, and 2, c1 plus c2 plus 1, c2 is equal to 8. Well, right away I can figure out that c1 is equal to 3, and if I plug in 3 there, I've got uh, 6 plus C2 is equal to 8, so C2 would have to be 2. So I've got my, uh, my 3 and my 2 there, so I'm going to plug those in for C1 and C2. So I've got, um, let's see, C1 was 3, e to the negative 2t times 1, 2 plus c2 is 2 times t e to the negative 2t times 1, 2, plus uh, e to the negative 2t. I'm just copying that general solution now, 0, 1, but I filled in c1 and c2. And I see that I could simplify a little bit because this 2, this 2 e to the negative 2t, I could combine it with this 3 e to the negative 2t. The, the t part I'm going to have to write separately. So this is, uh, let, let me uh, expand out maybe this right-hand set of terms here. This is 2t e to the negative 2t times 1, 2, plus 2 e to the negative 2t times 0, 1. And then I can combine my like terms here with the e to the negative 2t's. So I'll get uh, e to the negative 2t times 3 times 1, 3 times 1, and 2 times 0, so just a 3 there. And then on the bottom I've got 3 times 2, and 2 times 1, that's 6 plus 2 is 8, plus uh, t e to the negative 2t. If I multiply that uh, this 2 in with this vector, I get uh, 2, 4 there. And that's as simple as it's going to get. By the way, notice that it's very easy to check now. If I plugged in t equals 0, the right-hand side would all go to 0, and the left-hand term would give me 3, 8. So that's what it was supposed to be. Um, so I, I can check that I've got it right. That's very easy. So let me recap what we did there. 
started out with the general solution that I worked out in example three. So if that general solution was a complete mystery to you, just go back and watch example three. You'll see it. Um, and then I plugged in t is equal to zero here based on my initial condition. So I plugged in t equals zero. So just wherever I saw a t, I threw in a zero. So all my e to the two t's become one. And the t e to the two t actually drops out and becomes zero because of that zero. And so I just end up with c1 times 1, 2 plus c2 times 0, 1. And that resolves itself into two equations and two unknowns. They're very easy equations. I get uh, my solution c1 equals 3, c2 is equal to 2. So I plop those back in here. c1 is 3, c2 is 2. Plop those back in here. And it's a little bit messy, so I want to uh, maybe expand out this 2, distribute it to here and here. And then I see I've got an e to the 2t term here and an e to the 2t term here. So I combine those. And then I had to distribute the 3 into the 1 and 2. So that turned into 3 and 6. 3, 6 plus uh, 2 times 0, 1, 0, 2. 3, 6 plus 0, 2 gave me 3, 8. And then this 2 distributing into the 1 and 2 gave me that 2 and 4. So that's my final form of the solution there. But it's also easy to check if I plug in t equals 0 in here. This term would drop out because of the t outside, that t outside. This term would turn into 1, and I'd get 3, 8. So it does check that I matched the initial condition that I was given. So that's our last example, and that wraps, wraps up our lecture on uh, repeated eigenvalues. So this was the... Um, systems of differential equations where we had repeated eigenvalues. Um, this is all part of a larger lecture series on differential equations here on educator.com. My name is Will Murray, and I thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.